Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about why I decided to leave Lightroom for a new editing software and what capabilities this new software gives me as a landscape photographer and even why I think you may wanna to switch to right after this. Hey, what's up guys and welcome into the video. On this channel, we talk landscape photography. So if you are into landscape photography at all, consider subscribing to this channel. Now in this video specifically, I wanna talk about photo post-processing. Now in landscape photography, photo post-processing is really a third of the overall work that you have to do to get a great photo result. The first third is your planning section or research section. The middle third is your infield work, your actions, you're applying what you know for landscape photography to create a great image in your camera. And then the last third is your post-processing techniques. Now, for post-processing, I've always used Lightroom. And I use Lightroom just because it's a very simple way to take what I get in the field and produce a great image from that. However, I've always had some slight issues with Lightroom that not everything in the Adobe platform was in Lightroom itself. I would always be switching back and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop. And I got really tired of doing that. It's, it's a constant struggle to switch screens back and forth between one software to another. And I finally found a software that allows me to do everything that I do in Lightroom and Photoshop in one software. And that software is called Luminar 2018. And, and just a disclaimer to this video, Luminar 2018 does not pay me anything. Like I found this software and I just really enjoyed how it complemented my landscape photography and the ease that it helped me get out of my landscape photography post-processing. And really the simplicity of it is why I decided to switch away from Lightroom. So in this video, I wanna take you on my computer screen and really show you exactly why I made the switch and I'm leaving Lightroom for Luminar 2018. And also one drawback that I think Luminar 2018 should really highly consider adding to their new updates whenever those come out. Now, my old workflow for post-processing went from Lightroom and I would do all my basic corrections there. Then I would take it over to Photoshop. I would do all of the more advanced edits there with layers. And then I would pull that back over into Lightroom to make some very, very minor final tweaks. Now I'm going to show you right now how I can do everything in one software using Luminar 2018. I'm going to take you to my computer screen right now. So what I wanted to do with Luminar 2018 to really show you the power that it has is take you from what I shot in the field and all the way to the finished product. Now this was a photograph that I shot in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. If you want to see the video, the, be the behind the scenes footage of shooting this waterfall, click on the card that's showing up in your screen right now so you can watch the behind the scenes features of this shot. But on with this video, I I want to complement everything in this photograph. And, and when I bring something over into post-processing, I always look for things that I want to bring out of the photograph that will really complement my style. Now in this photo specifically, I can see that I really want to complement the dark shadow tones, the blacks, but I also want to bring out some really vivid greens since there was a lot of green moss in this photo too. I like a lot of really dark tones and really bright colors in the same photograph. That's like my photographic style. So the first thing that I do when I bring a photograph into Luminar 2018 is use these filters at the bottom. And I used to be against filters. Like I used to be one of those people that thought, well, using filters is kind of like a cop out. But I've recently grown over my photo life and photo experience to embrace filters because it makes the editing process much faster. Now, if you didn't want to use filters, you can actually choose workspaces that you can use for Luminar 2018 that will give you different options like 
Obviously, I would do a lot of landscape workspaces in this and it would come up with a very familiar screen that you would see in Lightroom. You have sliders, you have different tools you can use to edit your photos. But for this photograph specifically, what I want to do is use one of these filters to really bring out what I want this photo to look like. So scrolling through these, I can see a preview of what this is gonna look like. Now what I'm looking for is maintaining the rich black tones in this photo, but also highlighting vivid greens in this. And I think the vivid preset in this photo really does that for me. And as I click it, it applies all of these uh, edits to the photograph and it actually allows me to look at this whole workspace that it's created for me just by using these these filters at the bottom now what i notice in this is that it has really brought out the greens which i want and i can adjust that because they're a little too brought out for me now i'm just going to slightly adjust saturations and vibrance in this photo. And then I'm actually going to bring shadows back down a little bit. Maybe not that much, but just enough to allow me to see uh, what's within that shadow. And then I'm gonna bring down the blacks as well to create more separation and more contrast. As you can see, contrast has already been adjusted here. Now, this is the end of my work in this workspace, but what the great thing about Luminar 2018 is, is you can make custom workspaces, which is what I love, and it sets it up into layers like you would use in Photoshop. So right here, as what you can see in this workspace, I have a basic raw develop layer. As I scroll down, I have a saturation and vibrance layer and a polarizing layer. Now I can click and move these around too. Like I can bring the polarizing filter up above saturation and vibrance. But what I wanna show you is I can add filters or layers as they use filters as layers. And I can add these filters into this editing process. And one of these that I really like is Accent AI filter. And, and it allows me what I've really seen is to add more clarity into a photograph and also add a little bit more detail into the colors of this photograph. So as I just increase like this Accent AI filter, I'll notice that my greens are getting a little neon like they were in the field, but also the shadows, I'm getting a little bit more clarity in those shadows while keeping them pretty dark. So I'm gonna keep that at about 19. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another filter. Now for this filter, what I'm gonna add is a hue, saturation, and luminance filter. And that's your HSL option here. So I can click that and it'll bring up my hue, saturation, and luminance in this photograph specifically. So you kinda gotta know what you want to edit within this photograph and then bring those filters in if you don't choose an, a preloaded workspace. So. I have my hues, I like where my hues are at. My saturations are what I wanna fix. Now, I, in my waterfall photography, do not like a lot of bluish water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my blues and I'm gonna reduce that saturation so that the blues are removed out of the waterfall itself. If I really bring that up, you can see that the water is really blue. If I increase that a lot, I'm just gonna decrease that to get the white look of waterfalls into this photograph specifically, and that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna add another filter. Again, this is like Photoshop. You're stacking layers on top of each other to create a really high quality image. And I'm going to come to the curves filter. Now the curves filter is going to bring up your basic curve adjustments that you can use. And what I'm gonna do is create a luminosity mask out of this. What the great thing about Luminar 2018 is, it allows me to create luminosity masking inside this software, so I'm not switching back to Photoshop from Lightroom, creating a luminosity mask there, putting it back in Lightroom, taking it back to Photoshop, creating another luminosity mask or a color grade mask, anything like that. I can do this in Luminar 2018, and basically what I wanna do is create a very basic S curve on this curve adjustment layer. And then I'm going to come up here to this little drop down paintbrush. 
I have different options. I can brush in where I want this to be. I can create a gradient mask using this effect. I create a radial mask or like I'm doing right now, I'm gonna create a luminosity mask. Now what a luminosity mask does is it applies what this filter has done to 50% gray and lighter tones in this photo. So I'm gonna click luminosity masking and you'll see that once the luminosity mask is applied, it's just going to boost the photograph a little bit more to make it that much better. And I love this because once again, it allows me to do everything in Luminar 2018 and saves me a lot of time and a lot of memory time on my computer while I'm editing these photos. So this is about all that I really want to do with this photograph. And, and look, if you wanted to dodge and burn this, you could dodge and burn really increase this all the way and then click start painting and you could paint in exactly in this photograph where you would want the dodging and burning to take place now i don't want to do that so i'm going to hit Control or command z to reduce that and get that off of my photo but it gives you an idea you can create masks you can create filters gradient filters paint brushes, exactly where you want these edits to be. And what I love to do to see how much this actually impacts your photographs is clicking on the before and after slider. So if I click on this little icon up here, you can see exactly what I've done from beginning to end with this photo. And it's, it's pretty stark. Like honestly, I've gone back through all of my photos that I did with Lightroom and I've applied these tricks and re-edited all of my photos that I took two, three, four, five years ago and applied these techniques to those photos and they are way better than they were back then, for sure. So I love Luminar 2018. Again, they don't pay me to do this, but I did reach out to them and ask them to give a discount code to anyone who wants to switch over to them for my subscribers. That's linked below in the video description. Just read that, use the code in checkout when you want to check out Luminar 2018 a little bit more. And look, I love this. I love photo editing. I love options that are saving me time and saving me memory on my computer as I'm going through and editing these photographs. And look, if Luminar 2018 isn't what you wanna use, you want to use Lightroom, that's awesome. The one thing I wish Luminar 2018 would do is allow me to import everything from my SD card into Luminar 2018 and kind of organize my photos using this software as well. Now I can import these into folders onto my computer already anyways, and then edit these one by one with Luminar 2018. And that's what I've been doing and I have no real problem doing it. But if it implemented that importing process, that would make this like the complete package for photographers and post-processing. Again, if you wanna check this out, it's linked in the video description and also that discount code is linked below as well. For me, I'm switching to Luminar 2018 from Lightroom. It's going to save me a lot of time in my post-processing when I don't wanna go through and spend hours on a photo. This will allow me to reduce my time editing my photos by half. Hey guys, if you liked this video at all or you found it useful, maybe you want to switch to Luminar 2018, hit the thumbs up, comment below on if you're considering switching, maybe any questions you have on the software, I'd be happy to answer those questions for you. And always subscribe to this channel if you want more landscape photography advice, tricks, if you want any questions answered, subscribe. And continuing watching is always an option too. I'm going to include the best choice for you as a viewer, personally you, based on your YouTube search terms right now so that you can continue watching and improve your photography with these short instructional videos. Thanks so much guys and enjoy the next video.